Welcome to this Easy 11 Plus short lesson on mean and median averages, as well as the mode and the range. If you find this lesson useful, please like, subscribe, and click the bell button. The worksheet for today's lesson is linked in the video description, along with lots of other useful things. And don't forget that my Easy 11 Plus live lessons are in this channel every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Okay, let's get started. So this is a classic question asking for you to find the mean of some numbers. And finding the mean is dead simple. You need to add the numbers together and then divide by the number of numbers. So there are three numbers here, so it's divided by three. Three plus 10 plus 26 is 39. And 39 divided by three is 13. As simple as that. Let's go on to the next one, which is asking us to find the median. Now the median is also a kind of average, but it involves putting the numbers in order from smallest to largest and then taking the middle value. So let's do that. So we've got two. At this stage, it's very useful just to count how many numbers there are and check that they're the same number as in the question. Seven numbers here, seven numbers here. Now to find the middle number, this is a really simple method that will help you to avoid mistakes. So our median value is eight. Now I think it's worth taking a moment to think about how the mean and the median are different. Let's look at the three numbers from question one. Three, 10, and 26. Now, if I changed the larger number like this, the mean, would change quite a lot because now when I add them together I'll get a much bigger value and when I divide this by three that will be a larger result. However if I was looking for the median the answer would be 10 whether this number was 36 or 26. So the median is less sensitive to numbers changing higher or lower in our list of values. Now we need to find the mode of our list of numbers here. Now the mode is the most frequently occurring value in our set of numbers. And if we look back at them here, we can see that eight appears twice, but two appears three times. So very simply, the mode is two. And there's no real working for us to put here apart from writing out the number list again, which it isn't worth doing. A lot of people forget what the range is. Well. If you think about what the range, for example, of an electric car might be, that means how far can it go on one charge of its battery? So range is about how far. In the case of a list of numbers, we're looking at how far the distance is from the smallest number to the largest. The smallest number is two, the largest number is 58. How do you find the distance between two numbers? Well, you subtract them. As simple as that. The range is 56. Now we've got another median question. This looks easy. Let's just apply the same method. First we need to write them in order. And now we do the same thing. So, ah. So now we've got two numbers in the middle. So what do we do here? Well, the answer is that you need to find the value exactly halfway between those two numbers. But finding a value exactly halfway in between 7.5 and 9 is a little bit tricky. What does it mean to find the value exactly halfway between two numbers? Think of it like this. You need to find the mean of those two numbers. How do we find the mean? We add them together and divide by the number of numbers. And now it's as simple as that. And we should just check that we haven't made some mistake by imagining this value in our list of numbers up here. So if we want to put it in that gap, is 8.25 about halfway between 7.5 and 9? And we can see that it is. And in fact, if we think about it a bit more, 7.5 to 8.25 is 0 0.75, and 8.25 to 9 is also 0 0.75. So this is indeed the correct answer. What number is exactly halfway between 3 sevenths and 1 and 8 twenty-firsts? Hard to say. So we've just done this. How do you find the value exactly halfway between two numbers? You take the mean of them. So the first thing we need to do here is add together 3 sevenths and 1 and 8 twenty-firsts. 
it's a fractions problem. Can we remember how to do this? Well, you could add 3 sevenths and 8 twenty-firsts and then add one to that. Personally, when I'm dealing with fractions, I always prefer to get rid of any integers such as one and just have everything as a fraction. So let's write out our problem. Now one is three divided by three or five divided by five or 21 divided by 21. So one and eight twenty-firsts is the same as 21 twenty-firsts plus eight twenty-firsts, which is, and three sevenths, well seven goes into 21 three times. So three sevenths is nine twenty-firsts. And now we just need to add the top parts together. Okay, so that's three sevenths plus one and eight twenty-firsts. Of course, because we're finding the mean of these two numbers, we now need to divide this by two. How do we divide by two? Well, of course, we find a half of something, and of means times. So we need to do 38 over 21 times a half. And that's easy enough. You remember how to times fractions, multiply the top values, and multiply the bottom, bottom values. So is this our answer? Almost. We have to simplify it. We can see that both these numbers divide by two, and 19 is a prime number, so we can't simplify this, we can't reduce this any further. There's quite a lot of working there because we're dealing with some fiddly fractions, but the principle is really simple. If you want to find the value halfway between two numbers, you add them together, then divide by two, which is another way of saying that we find the mean of those two numbers. Now here's a classic kind of exam question using the mean. And it's going to look really difficult, I think. Five numbers have a mean of 25. Four of the numbers are 58, 33, and 17. What is the fifth number? Well, if they don't tell us, how can we possibly know? But like a lot of things in maths, you just need to write down what you know and see what comes out. So how would you find the mean? Well, you'd find the mean by, first of all, adding together all the numbers. And there's another number that we don't know. Let's call it question mark. And if we were going to find the mean, we'd divide this total by the number of numbers. And including our unknown fifth number, question mark, we have five numbers here. Let's simplify this a bit. 50 plus 8 plus 33 plus 17. 33 plus 17 is going to give us 50, because 3 plus 7 is 10 and 50 plus 8 is 58, so that's going to be 108. And we know that the mean is 25, because the question tells us. Now, you can think about this algebraically, but you can also think about it common sense jaically. 108 plus something divided by 5 is 25, so 108 plus something not divided by 5 must be 5 times as big because 125 is 5 times 5. Now from this point onwards we can apply a bit more common sense gibber. Um, so 108 plus something is 125. So something must be the difference between 125 and 108. And of course that is 17. Now at this stage why don't we just check that to make sure that it works. So all five numbers divided by five should give 25. So 50 plus eight plus 33 plus 17 gives 108, plus another 17 gives 125, and 125 divided by five gives 25. So our answer works. I hope that's useful. If it was, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell button. Take a moment to explore the other videos on this channel and the links in the video description. And I hope to see you at six o'clock on Tuesday evening for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Bye-bye.